Hey, Scott, thanks for taking the time today. Um, just wanted to ask you about Amani Hooker and just the development you've seen out of him. Yeah. Hi, Kayla. Appreciate you uh, asking a question about Amani. Um, Amani's done a <clears throat> really good job uh, in this second year of really trying to understand the NFL game, really trying to understand our defense and really do a deep dive into our defensive scheme over, you know, the Zoom time and everything else. And then over these uh, first few weeks of practices, uh, you can see improvement with him and uh, some of the things we've asked him to prove, him, whether that's open field tackling, um, <clears throat> whether that's being able to make some plays in, uh, in space or make some plays on the ball, you can see him uh, trying to improve those things. And, and so uh, I've been happy with his progress so far and look forward to continued progress uh, before we get to September 14th. Harry? Scott, if you were to sum up Mike Vrabel, his coaching style and the way he goes about his business in running this team in a sentence or two or a word or two, what would that be? His coaching style or how he, he runs the team? I just want to make sure I – Both, both. If you could okay. sum, that, sum that up in a couple of sentences, what would it be? Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know, again, I don't want to speak for, for uh, Mike Vrabel, but from my perspective, um, Mike Vrabel is a hands-on um, head coach who is uh, very detail-oriented and um, is involved in all three aspects of the game. Um, and he wants to impress the same competitiveness on every – single play, every single drive, every single game that he had when he played and, and put that into our team and make it the blueprint. Thanks. Rex Road. Got that on mute, Rex Road. Well, shoot, does that mean I was unmuted and I muted? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, I'm still learning Zoom. Um, yeah, Scott, thanks for doing this. Uh, I just I wanted to ask you about Kenny and Kevin and their chemistry back there, and I guess their versatility, too, to sort of do everything. How, how important is, you know, the, the communication, chemistry between them in terms of how they both do their jobs? Hey, Joe, appreciate you asking that about those two guys. So, uh, you know, they, Kenny and Kevin, really in their third year in our defense, uh, ha have a really good chemistry back there. They're able to communicate both verbally and nonverbally, which is great. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you can see that in, in some of the things that we do on the field. And then just talking about them as, as far as uh, leadership and all that type of both of them have taken a, a, a big step in, in leadership of not only the defensive back room, but I'd say uh, of, our, of our defense as well, just, just being able to be uh, veteran voices back there. Well, thanks. Hang on for me just one sec. Paul. Hey, book. How much is uh, how much is Dane missing out on right now, and uh, how do you how to try to keep him up to speed? Yeah, I mean, 
we get creative as far as when um you know guys aren't aren't able to uh do certain things or whatever and so um you know whether it be uh zoom meetings whatever uh you know we keep all of our guys engaged and um so that's exactly what we're doing with with everybody uh you know who, who's not able to be out there so he, he's been engaged he's been uh, doing all the things as far as, you know, in the meeting and stuff like that and uh, doing extra stuff as well. So we'll continue to do that um, as long as we need to. Rex Road. Yeah, Scott, following up on Kevin and Kenny, how, how would you – I guess compare their skill sets to each other, and we I think we, we have a good feel for obviously Kevin's leadership, as you mentioned. Um, you know that's obviously been building since he's been with the Titans. What about Kenny in particular um, as a leader, as a vocal presence? You know how how are they the same? Maybe how are they different? Yep, Joe, I appreciate that. And Joe, you know I actually didn't answer the question about versatility. So I, I actually want to touch about their versatility. As far as comparing them, I don't really want to get into the comparison of each other, but talking about both their versatility, um, both Kenny and Kevin, uh, you know, Kenny playing at another, uh, you know, on another team and stuff like that. He, he's done a lot in his, you know, six or seven years in the NFL. So he's shown a great deal of versatility with us and, and in his past teams. And then, Obviously, Kevin, same thing, you know, as far as just being with us. But he's obviously been in a, another system before we came here. And his versatility to play in the post, play man-to-man, -man, uh, you know, and, and do everything we need him to do uh, has been pretty evident. And then, like I said, with Kenny uh, being able to do a mul multiple things as well is a big plus for us so that we don't have to put one guy in a certain position and one guy in another position. Uh, we're able to use them in multiple ways as far as Kenny's leadership um, you know Kenny came in here uh, almost two years to the day um, and, and really just has been the same person since he came in and really what I mean by that is that he is uh, one of the hardest workers we have um, one of the first guys in the building and that hasn't changed uh, since like I said the first day he got here until right now and uh, he's, uh, he's honestly one of our most intense defensive backs. Um, he loves the game, and um, his leadership style is, is that he shows everybody how much he loves the game, holds himself to a high standard, and uh, will, will hold other guys to, to the same standard that, that he holds himself to on a, on a daily basis, on a play-by-play -play basis. Um, see how physical he plays out on the field, and he demands that from his teammates. And uh, like I said, he just he just works very hard and and does a really good job, especially for the younger guys that we have in the defensive back room. That ability to interchange those guys, would you say it's unique, or would you say it's maybe you guys have it? Are, have a little bit more ability to do that than other teams do with their safeties? Uh, shoot, I, I, I don't know uh, if I can answer that. All I'll say is that it's, it's great for us. You know, it's great for us that we can interchange those guys and those guys aren't pigeonholed as far as, you know, this guy's this type of safety and this guy's that type of safety. So for us and what we do in our defense, uh, that's – that's really how we want to operate. Um, we don't want to put our safeties into, into saying that they're just this one type box guy and this other guy uh, can't play in the box. So for us, it's, it's been great to have uh, these past two years going on to three years. Awesome, thanks, appreciate it. Jim. Hey Scott, good to see you. Um, I will ask you a question about a couple of guys. I guess one's Amani, and he, we had him on a Zoom yesterday talk about wanting to lose some weight to play faster. Are, are you seeing that from last year to this year? And is that something he thought he should do, or does somebody else say, hey, it might be a good idea to help your speed if you lose a little bit of weight? Yeah, 
I think, um, you know, I definitely, like I said before, with the with the other question about Monty, um, that he's really taken uh, strides into doing things that we've asked him to do from year one to year two. And after every season, we, we touch base with our guys and, and give them goals uh, on the field, off the field, weight room wise, and us also with their weight. And, and so with discussion with a lot of people, uh, you know, Amani did lose a couple pounds and I think he's more comfortable at that weight. And uh, more importantly, just from my perspective, uh, I, I see that he is uh, playing at a faster rate. So, so um, yeah, I think that's been beneficial to him. What, what's kind of next for him? I mean, I, I, he played a lot. I mean, certainly played in every game. Uh, a lot on special teams, but what's what's his next step in year two? Yeah, I think we're emphasizing with him uh, just the development of our defense and not just knowing exactly what's on that piece of paper, you know, but bringing that piece of paper to life, uh, you know, the the playbook, bring that playbook to life and and putting his twist and spin on it. Um, obviously within our defense, but but still being able to put his own uh, twist on it. And, uh, and then also just, you know, emphasizing with him along with our, our other players, uh, you know, safeties is making plays, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're put in a lot of positions at the safety position here with our defense to make plays. And uh, whether that is uh, to be able to make tackles, to be able to break up balls, to be able to have interceptions, all that types of things, you know, you see uh, from our safety position and, and we want to make sure specifically talking about Amani, that, that he is making those plays when, when they come to him. And last one from me on, on Chris Jackson. I mean, it seems like he's a pretty feisty guy on the practice field. What, what have you just seen from him? And uh, what, what's he maybe need to improve on moving forward? Yeah, I think what you probably don't see, obviously, on the practice field um, that we see is just his uh, attention to detail in the classroom. He, he really is a, is a student of the game, uh, really smart. Um, and then on the field, the thing, uh, you know, has been see the improvement from day one. You know, he didn't have OTAs as a, as a rookie. You know, he, his first practice was uh, obviously in late July. And uh, just see the improvement from late July until August 25th practice was our last practice um, has been great to see. Every comes out and he improves in, in one aspect of his game and you keep on putting those type of days together and uh you know you, you have pretty productive camp as a as a rookie um obviously a lot of things to work on and and uh you know he by no means has mastered anything but just the daily improvement has really been uh a great thing to see thank you scott Hey, Kim, okay. if, no one, if no one else is in here, I may slide in one more. Okay, go ahead, Jim. I, I was just going to ask you, I, I know it, it helps you, Scott, that you've got some, a lot of guys returning that have been with you in the past. But, but what has camp been like as far as a teaching, uh, from a teaching perspective? Do you have to do that more now that you maybe wouldn't have done if you had OTAs in minicamp? I mean, how, how much of your time are you spending preaching technique, how you want things done, and – have you had to do more of that than a normal camp? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good question. And um, first off, I think that the uh, the Zoom meetings, um, the way our guys approached them, um, allowed us to get a lot of things taught. Um, obviously, in the classroom, so that's a positive. And then they retained a lot of that information too that was taught. So that's a positive too. When we came back and we talked to them and, and, you know, we're in the classroom, uh, you know, there was a lot of re retention of discussed. But as far as on the field, there's no question that um, not having the OTAs uh, with our footwork, with, uh, you know, ball skills, tackling, all those things that you just build upon in those OTA practices, um, you know, we were playing a bit of catch up. Um, but nobody had OTAs. So we're all a lot of the same amount of time during during the, this time in practice. And, and so, you know, we're, we're making sure that we hit all of those things as far as our fundamentals 
in our, our everyday drills and our skills uh, every single day. And, uh, you know, maybe making sure that we hit them, you know, a little bit harder or making sure we're a little bit more intentional with them because we know we didn't get them in, you know, May and June. But yeah, hard.